First, we did weapons. Now, we move to sub-weapons and specials. If you want to share some misinformation with your friends, here's a bunch of fake facts. Did you know? The pyramid shape of the splat bomb inspired a short-lived line of kitchenware bowls built to mimic its shape. However, Inklings found them difficult to clean and even more annoying to store, causing sales to dwindle until everyone went back to circular bowls. How sad. An Octoling recently connected inactivated suction bombs to their suckers thinking they could eject them later on in a real fight. In the end, the only damage done was to their pride after all the bombs exploded at once. Fun fact! The youth of the Splatlands used to use burst bomb style plastic mesh packaging to carry extra drinks and soft foods with them to school. However, uh, this was strictly forbidden after a burst bomb full of applesauce was hurled directly through an open window in Flounder Heights. Oops. A seeker will destroy any curling bomb on site, even if both bombs belong to the same team. A popular pastime of Inklings is to place a seeker and release a bunch of different colored curling bombs and see which curling bomb the seeker destroys. Did you know curling bombs are great for juggling? Except when the performer misses a catch and it rolls out into the audience. We believe auto bombs can be used as a medical tool as well as a weapon. One way to test an Inkling's ability to focus is to give them a small story to read, but also set off a multitude of auto bombs just outside the door. The idea is to see how well they can read, even while hearing all those ticking noises in the background. The shortest comedy act to date began with the following line. Want to hear a joke? Well, don't mind if I do. Then he was booed off the stage. Have you heard the rumor of toxic mist canisters being filled with disruptor components instead? Just because they look similar doesn't mean your ban will be any shorter when Judd finds out. The real reason why nobody from the Splatlands visits Kelp Dome is because a group of science-savvy Octoling students thought they could test their extra-large, hyper-potent toxic mist in the middle of the night. When it was used, um, a, a massive plume of mist enveloped the Kelp Dome and to this day is still being dealt with. Next time, bring a chaperone. Nobody knows how the sound is generated when a point sensor lands. However, a remixed beat of just that noise is a fan favorite on Squid Squawk for videos. Feeling too hot in the summer? Well, how about you open up a friendly game of Turf War and pull out a splash wall? If it's on your team, it's so much better than a sprinkler. Take my word for it. Oh, uh, sprinkler was next on my list? Uh, well, uh, well, stacking sprinklers is considered a crime these days due to how often the stack will just fall apart. Who would have guessed a wobbly, mechanically twisting tower of ink would be so dangerous? Probably everyone. The near infinite amount of time a squid beacon can exist for makes it an excellent drying rack for freshly cleaned clothes. Just be careful not to super jump to it on accident. One form of fizzy bomb sabotage is to sneak into somebody's locker and slightly open every single fizzy bomb in there. Then, when your opponent goes to use their bombs, they won't bounce nearly as far as usual. Not that I recommend you do that. A young inkling had a great idea, or so they thought, when they attached a note to a torpedo and sent it up towards their friend's apartment. Too bad she didn't get to read it before the torpedo, um, you know, exploded. Maybe stick to the super jumps, kids. Fun fact! A short-lived campaign to increase the popularity of the angle shooter involved adding various scents to the sub-weapons. However, the smell was so strong that most cephalopods could just swim away from the line marker's trail before running into it. Whoops! Hey, you want some special facts? I got those too. <laughs> Did you know the protective film that makes the baller semi-invincible to enemy fire was first manufactured by the gear industry to help Inklings be able to withstand a few shots on the battlefield. That's why you can't wear more than one gear set at a time. It'd be too big of an advantage. The only time someone has ever hacked the parameters of the big bubbler 
was to make it even bigger and create a giant circus tent. The show lasted for about five minutes, but most of it consisted of the tent maker running around and getting a new big bubbler. Apparently, you can't make it stay open longer and force it to be bigger. Having an unlimited amount of ink while using a bomb launcher has inspired Inklings to see who can cover the most ground possible before their launcher runs out. The best record is actually held by a blah blah or deco. Prior to the patent of the Booyah Bomb, there actually was a this way wave. The idea being that after rallying a large number of this ways, a massive wave of turf would wash over a chunk of the battlefield. However, uh, too much water would often get pulled in by this attack, making it dangerous for everyone. I'd give it a 7.8 out of 10. Attempts to fill bubble blower bubbles with confetti during Splatfests have been relatively unsuccessful. It's a great idea until you pop the bubble and just have soggy paper everywhere. Just more mess to clean up, huh? No, the bubbler will not let you jump into the Mahi Mahi pool. It only protects you from enemy ink, not a massive body of water. Access to the pools was made even stricter after a recent incident involving nearly a dozen extremely excited inklings. One of the best selling toys of the summer are bouncy balls shaped like a closed up crab tank. Thankfully, they don't hurt like a real one. A jellyfish interested in starting a pest extermination business successfully altered an echolocator to not just search for nearby cephalopods, but also bugs and other small creatures. However, uh, it worked a little too well. So well that he threw out the entire machine after the first use, absolutely shocked by the number of bugs underneath his home. Have you ever seen a phone flash out of nowhere in a movie theater? You don't want to know how angry the average squid gets when someone accidentally activates their ink armor. It's instant removal from the theater, by the way. The biggest prank of the last year was when 14 octopi came together to fire ink storms all at once in one spot, causing the local Splatlandian weather team to send out a warning of sudden rain just for it to disappear 10 seconds later. <laughs> Using an ink vac to clean your apartment in the Splatlands is strictly prohibited. At least a few inklings are injured every year when ink vac shots go flying out the windows and into the street below. Routine maintenance of the inkjet exhaust pipes is mandatory in the Splatlands. Highly pressurized pipes due to blockages can get very hot and scorch a tentacle. Have you ever wondered why Ink Strike was replaced by Triple Ink Strike? Well, uh, here's your answer. A few faulty Ink Strike activators were accidentally detonated in a shipment of special weapons a few years back. Due to the strike's sheer size, uh, basically everything in that pile immediately combusted as well. <laughs> Not fun. Ah, the original Ink Zuka. The number of lawsuits filed against Inklings in Moray Towers was absolutely bananas back in those days. For every 15 Inkzookas that would miss its target, about one would fly off into the parking garage and damage a vehicle. Someone wasn't really thinking with that map design. Some specials should never mix, like a reef slider and a killer whale. Do not try to fly straight through a real killer whale with a reef slider. Please. Last time, it took a month to fix the damage. Have you heard the rumor that the Killer Whale 5.1 was born from someone cutting a killer whale into five pieces? Unreasonable as it sounds, it doesn't stop about one inkling every month from smashing one of the Killer Whale 5.1 speakers and hoping it'll rise up and create a Killer Whale 25.1. The most expensive disaster in recent times wasn't even a natural one. A group of Inklings decided Salt Spray Rig would be the perfect place for Kraken Tag. Over 50 Krakens were popped simultaneously on the field and began to ping pong around the structures with no regard for the equipment stored there. And then a massive crane tipped over the stack of boxes and, uh, well, uh, I've heard they've since ceased operations. Contrary to popular belief, a deactivated reef slider can, for a few minutes, not sink in water. 
Just don't take it to Mahi Mahi Resort, as it will activate even outside of battle because of how close you are to the turf war field. The rush of adrenaline from a splashdown is so enticing for some cephalopods that there are specific the rush of adrenaline from a splashdown is so enticing for some cephalopods that there are specified splashdown spots in every city for letting off some steam. The iconic sound of the stingray, that psh noise you hear, was a specially developed sound made to only be played in battle to train inklings to hear it and react appropriately. Try firing a stingray outside, and you'll notice it sounds completely different. The drink served by the tactic cooler should never be drank warm. There's a reason that fridge is ice cold. You'll feel real sleepy otherwise. So tired, you might just fall asleep on the battlefield. It's rumored that a total of 10 million coins was spent in a bidding war by advertisers for whose logo would go on the Tenta Missiles bottle rockets. And once the Tenta Missiles were in production, uh, well, barely any extra sales were generated, so I guess it was a bust. Remember, improving the power level of special weapons is strictly prohibited, but that doesn't stop cephalopods from trying. Triple Ink Strike is easily the worst choice, though, seeing as 17 sets of strikes have exploded preemptively from tampering in the last three years. Please just stop doing that. Have you ever wanted a quad zooka instead of a tri zooka? Yeah, me too. But you'll never get it after an Octoling took a modified version of the tri zooka into Scorch Gorge last week. She got away with it for exactly nine matches before all was said and done, though pretty good for literally breaking the law. <laughs> I am obligated by Ammonites, though, to tell you to not follow in her footsteps. Hear me out. Children's hammers shaped like an ultra stamp. Sounds like a great idea, right? Wrong. Having turf war on the television from such a young age can make these still-growing cephalopods crave some hammer-induced violence. And by some, I mean, oops. Looks like Citrine destroyed the table for the third time this year. Yikes! Looks like Crest ruined another analog clock! And the list goes on. One of the sneakiest hacks done in recent times was when someone altered their wave breaker to make the waves come out three times as fast. Needless to say, the cameras found that one real quick. And on Splat Zones, ooh, were his teammates angry. You didn't want to be there. One group of squids tried attaching a rubber ball to the end of a zip caster and then let it rip. The zip caster bounded from wall to wall to wall, knocking down two bystanders in the process. Stricter rules were put in place to prevent anyone from experimenting with the zip caster after that. Well, is your brain all full of fake knowledge now? Yes? Awesome. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe and leave a like for more Splatoony shenanigans, fake facts, and good fun in the future. Thank you for listening, and be sure to spread those fake facts.